7th of August, 2009, Mark Saylor, a former California Highway Patrolman, picked up a rental car, a brand new Lexus ES, after his CD player had broken in his own vehicle. He left that to be fixed, took the rental, and went to pick up his wife, daughter, and brother-in-law to head to soccer practice in Chula Vista, California. What followed was a tragedy. Minutes after picking up the Lexus, 911 responders received a panicked call from Mark's brother-in-law, Chris Lastrella, inside the car. The following is the distressing recording of that call. Be warned, it's not for the faint of heart. 911 emergency, what are you reporting? We're going north 125. Mm-hmm. And accelerator stuck. I'm sorry? Our accelerator stuck. We're on 125 and we're late. We're going 120, Mission Gorge. We're in, we're in trouble. We can't, well, there's no brakes. Okay. Mission Gorge, freeway half mile. Okay, and you don't have the ability to, like, turn the vehicle off or anything? We're approaching the intersection. We're approaching the intersection. Okay. We're approaching the intersection. Hold on. Pray, pray. Okay. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Hello? After the call cut off, Mark and his passengers hit another vehicle, span off the road, veered into the gully, and the car burst into flames. All four of them sadly were killed at the scene. In the hours afterwards, the recording went viral and mainstream media outlets were stepping over each other to figure out what exactly caused the car to uncontrollably accelerate, costing Mark and his family their lives. Floor mats. Soon after the crash, a caller highlighted that he had rented the very same car the day before and experienced uncontrollable acceleration himself, blaming it on a shoddy floor mat that wedged itself in exactly the wrong place. Following this Toyota, the owners of Lexus publicly recalled millions of vehicles and began redeployment of the floor mats in their production cars. Problem solved? Not really. Judging from the stories other consumers brought to light, floor mats accounted for only a small amount of the incident as various sources had said theirs were perfectly normal and secure, and yet uncontrolled acceleration had still occurred. So, they were deemed, at best, a contributing factor to a much larger problem. Toyota's Response Image Toyota is the world's largest car manufacturer, and this story was hurting their public image so badly that the CEO himself would eventually apologize to the family personally. I am deeply sorry for any accident that Toyota drivers have experienced. Especially, I would like to extend my condolences to the members of the Sailor family for the accident in San Diego. I would like to send my prayers again, and I will do everything in my power to ensure that such a tragedy never happen again. However, in the five years following the crash, 90 similar cases of uncontrolled, unexplained acceleration would lead to deaths. Toyotas were labeled as irresponsible, shameful, and disregarding of consumer safety by the actual Attorney General's office in the United States. The company would eventually pay $1.2 billion to the U.S. government, and a further $1.1 billion would be used in class action lawsuits while they attempted to cover up the underlying issue, which seemed to be that their cars had an undiscovered, highly dangerous fault. The braking argument. First instinct when putting yourself in Mark Saylor's shoes that day is to hit the brakes as hard as possible, so surely he did that. This assumption led most coverage, at the time, to push that there was obviously something wrong with the braking system in that car and Toyota's other vehicles. Even ABC, a premier American news outlet, produced a video supporting that Toyota's will cut out braking systems when a specific error in electronics and software coding occurs, which was completely undetectable. We're gonna take off here on Toyota. Oh, yeah, at uh, 20 miles an hour. Okay. Right, okay. Oh, just like that, huh? You can. The brakes don't work. The brakes give out. Gee. There's no DTC, there's no warning indicator lamp, there's no brake pedal override. And you induced a short. We induced a short. 
And that was a, I have to tell you, a very scary feeling that brakes did not work. So Toyota fixed this problem and that was that, right? Wrong again. You see, the video was staged. Most of the coverage in the media was aimed at Toyota and blaming them solely as it made for a big news story. In actual fact, it's much more complex than that. Malcolm Gladwell, a well-known and respected journalist, soon after the incident carried out a test in an aging Toyota. He held the accelerator to the floor and used the brakes at the same time, repeatedly, whether it it was in an old heavy Toyota, a station wagon, or a performance sports car, he found that braking stopped the car every time. All you have to do is step on the brakes, because brakes beat engines. So the two narratives were not matching up. While the Toyota media was pointing problem. at Toyota and their faulty braking systems, objective testing was pointing to something else. So what else could have caused these horrific issues? Before we let you know, if you're interested in this type of thing, please subscribe, like, share the video, and hit the bell. Research side. The academic research into incidents of unexplained acceleration shows, for the most part, the cause is usually a concept known as pedal error. Richard Schmidt, a respected researcher into the subject and one-time interviewee of Gladwell, has previously outlined that due to stressors, demanding circumstances, and outside influences, people driving unfamiliar cars are more likely to make very minute mistakes in otherwise routinely performed tasks. Much like your favorite basketball player missing a free throw, or a soccer player missing a penalty, he argues that drivers can think they've executed a routine braking maneuver when they haven't. A driver could be convinced that they've stepped on the brakes when in fact they're flooring it. Was there ever a moment when you suspected there might be a mechanical cause to these incidents? No. No. What I'm asking is, if Schmidt ever suspected that the problem might be with the car, a malfunction, a faulty bit of software, an engineering failure, and Schmidt one of the world's leading experts in human factors is saying that never once crossed his mind. Why? Because everything about sudden acceleration looked like a problem with the driver, not the car. As well as this, data attained by the U.S. Department of Transport from black boxes of vehicles that crashed after experiencing mysterious acceleration showed, in most cases, the drivers had not lifted their foot off the accelerator, thus backing up the idea that human error is a major contributor to these dangerous incidents. Pumping the brakes. Most importantly, it was discovered that power assisted braking is a likely main contributor to what actually happened. Lifting off the brakes whilst holding the accelerator pedal down fully to pump them is in certain vehicles counter to making them stop. The brakes themselves and their vacuum cannot build the pressure up at speed to apply the needed force onto the wheels once your foot has been lifted. Consumer reports demonstrated the issue with lifting your foot off the brake when your throttle is wide open. I'm gonna lift off my brake just once and then back down. I've lost power assist. I cannot slow this vehicle down. I'm pushing all my might. I'm going 40. Say I lift off my brake again and to pump them. Now I'm going 60. Cannot slow down the vehicle. Lift off again. 80 miles an hour. I'm powerless to slow this vehicle down. It showed exactly what the problem was. Further tests from third parties with over 20 Toyota cars showed that this occurred in most cases. And so it was concluded that the must be a major factor. The final word. So which side of this heated debate were in the right? Well, the fact is that evidence collected at the scene suggested that Mark had held the brakes down the entire time, and part of the floor mat was found to be resting in such a way that suggests it was obstructing the pedal. Conclusion. So it is believed that Mark Saylor, his wife, daughter, and brother-in-law were killed due to the accelerator of the unfamiliar Lexus ES being partially blocked by a floor mat and the power-assisted braking being unable to replenish enough pressure to stop the car due to a moment of sheer panic from the driver. All this said, the important thing to take away from a story like this is not the media hysteria, the billion-dollar lawsuits, or new expectations of how a car should perform. It's that driving under perfectly normal conditions is all always dangerous. Human error is a factor we should always be mindful of, and multinational companies can and will make mistakes. Ultimately, no matter the issues with the vehicle, Toyota or any car manufacturer cannot help you out on a highway when driving at 70 miles an hour. So drive safely and be aware of your vehicle's requirements, especially unfamiliar ones. Thanks for watching this video. For more like it and to stay informed of our upcoming projects, subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications and share, leave a comment about your thoughts on the story.